Good evening and thank you for joining us. Emotions ran high yesterday in Edmonton as the family of Dylan McGillis saw for the first time the man accused in his killing almost five years ago. Loved ones say until now they've been filled with grief, but yesterday those emotions shifted and all family members want now is justice. Distraught family members walk out of the courthouse moments after seeing this man, Cleophis de Coin Zunega, depicted in this sketch. I jumped up and uh, I guess maybe in court I shouldn't have, but I didn't really care. We wanted to see him. We just wanted to see him. The 23-year-old was charged with manslaughter earlier this week for the stabbing death of 20-year-old Dylan McGillis almost five years ago. I truly love that boy. Today as yesterday and the day before. I, you know, I just love my son so much. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the years previous, I know what Marlene has gone through, what my son has gone through, and my family has gone through. Oh, it's... Unbelievable. Dylan was swarmed and fatally stabbed on White Ave in front of a group of onlookers in November 2006. Dylan's murder just left such a hole in our family. Grandma here, she's crying now, and she cried a river of tears in the last four and a half years. So. For family members, a new chapter of pain has begun, one that goes beyond grief. All the people that we've talked to over the years that have gone through these things, oh, my heart, like I said, I'm just terrified to go through this because I see the pain that they've gone through, but I want it because I want those people in jail. Marlene McGillis didn't make it to court in time to see the accused, but she knows there will be plenty of opportunity. I realize that this is going to take a long haul. We don't want to, but again, i rather take it five years as long as they get every bloody one of them. Family members say while well, nothing will bring Dylan back, justice will make his passing easier to cope with. I wish I could see him again, just to hug him and love him. But Sonia Sunger, CTV News, Edmonton. The aptly named Three Cities Park is the site for the 39th annual Three Cities Fair in Paradise Valley. The event kicked off last night with a bull riding event and it carries through until tomorrow afternoon. For people in the region, it's a great opportunity to get together for some family activities and a whole lot more. There's lots of fun things and there's lots of fun people. After 39 years, there are of course some traditions. Pony chuck wagons and the agricultural displays are definitely mainstays. But the community tries to keep the fair fresh. In the last few years we've had a few things. We've had a, a steer show where a bunch of local people, we've got 50 steers and they judge them and uh, that. And we've added the Bullarama here, oh, it's probably f six, seven years ago. That Bullarama is a stop on the Professional Bull Riding Association's tour and last night the cowboys were thrilling locals of all ages. I really like going to the Bullarama and I like to go on the rides and the petting zoo. For people who live their whole life in the region, the fair is a chance to get out and see a lot of friends and family. It's obvious the youngsters are having a blast. Kids had a lot of fun. Today is great. It has lots of, there's lots of kids uh, events going on, petting zoo. Ball diamonds are busy all day. And we have uh, cattle penning, everything. Anything for everybody. And while the weather was threatening to put a damper on the horse racing, most of the other events were going ahead including the 24 team slow pitch tournament. The ball diamonds were a little messy this morning, but we got out and got them relimed and floated again. And uh, the slow pitch teams are kind of used to playing all kinds of weather, so they're all right. Putting together an event like this isn't easy, especially given the community members are few in number and some of them live fairly far apart. There's a lot of volunteers, put a lot of time and effort put in. You know, there's Perry's Valley and McLaughlin River, of course, aren't really that big a community, so it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of people out of the community to put this on. And that neighborly spirit is what keeps people coming back. It's the biggest event for the community every year. And it takes a community to run it too. After three weeks into the 2011 AFL season, there was a three-way tie for top spot. But that wasn't going to be the case after the Vandals and Wolfpack tangled this afternoon at Armstrong Field. The Wolfpack have had the Vandals number in past years, but the home side struck first and led 7-0 after the first. But the pack, they did respond in the second, tying it up and then drew even once again after the Vandals retook the lead. Last I heard, it was tied at 14 all at the break. I will have full highlights and post-game reaction from this one in tomorrow night sports. From the gridiron to the track and after being rained out two of the first four events to start the season, the CPCA and the weather was good to go this weekend down in Wainwright. 
Gary Gorse and Vern Nolan led the way after day one, setting themselves up nicely for the chance at a cool $10,000 on Sunday. In day two last night, Wayne Knight captured the fastest time of the night, turning in a 102.41 time. Knight now finds himself one race away from qualifying for the 10 Gs. BJ Carey placed second at 103.19. Logan Gorse crossed the finish line in third, while brother Shane and Vern Nolan rounded out the top five with a time of 103.95 each. Taking a look now at the two-day aggregate, Gary Gorst leads the way with a time of 206.75. Wayne Knight is in the second spot, while BJ Carey, as it sits right now, would be the final driver in the $10,000 Dash for Cash race. Day three of races is currently going on as I speak. 